Okay, we're here in Brannig in North Wales just to see how the Phoenix 5X operates in practice when using navigation. I've preloaded the course using the method described in my last video and this is basically a nine mile walk around the perimeter of Lynn Brannig. Right, let's set the watch up ready to navigate this course. So first of all, we select the app we're gonna use. So in this instance, it's gonna be hike. And then we long press the up button and then move down to navigation. Select that. And then we're gonna move down to courses and select the Brannig trail course. And then we're gonna to go to a map just to make sure the course is loaded in correctly. And there it is, marked out in a light blue. So we're going to press the back button and move up to do course. Now Lynn Brannig, the area that we're going to walk around today, was a reservoir created in 1976. Now here we can see the trail that we're going to walk and it takes us along a variety of terrain, through forestry, across moors, through various different farmers fields and then back across the dam back to the start. So let's start the trail off. So all we do once the course is loaded in is press the start button. So I'll take you some of the data screens I've got set up. This one is our pace. My pace is depicted by the green arrow and my target pace is depicted by the grey arrow. On this one this gives us our elevation profile across the entire course. Now Lynn Brannig, as I said before, is primarily used as a reservoir, but a lot of people use it for fishing or just relaxing by with a picnic. Now here we can see the map. The grey arrow is the target pace and the blue arrow is myself. I'm a little bit behind now so we need to speed up. Now this is a typical footpath on Brannig. As you can see, forestry on the left hand side and the actual lake is on the right. Now going back to the map screen, we can see three arrows here. The blue one is me, the grey one is my target pace, set at three miles an hour average walking pace, and the red arrow is always pointing north. I've set the watch to give me auto lap updates, so every mile it'll tell me how long it's taken to do the last mile, and the bottom number is the collective time across the entire walk. Now a lot of the routes downloaded across the internet are drawn using straight lines rather than the more accurate follow road technique and this is the case with the 5x. You can see on the map that the straight magenta line is the route that we've downloaded and the dashed red line is the actual path we're following. And here's the path, we can see it splits into three ways so it's handy to have the map to tell me which way to go. Now this route was obviously used by farmers hundreds of years ago and here we can see one of the old dry stone wall bridges that we're walking across. So let's check how we're doing. So we're ahead of pace by 2 minutes 54 seconds and our estimated finish time is 3.05. The big blue arrow denotes the direction that we need to travel in to keep on course and the distance remaining is 7.36 miles. On the elevation plot, the actual position we are is denoted by the green line so we can see if we've got any hills to go up or down in front of us. Here we can see we've got 2 hours 29 minutes left on the course which is 7.36 miles. Our estimated time of arrival is 15.49. On this screen we can see the time of day, how long it's taken us on the walk and the distance we've actually covered and also my average speed which is slightly ahead of the 3 mile an hour average pace. Here we have my elevation, my maximum ascent, my minimum elevation and my total ascent during the walk. And the actual temperature, uh, sunrise and sunset time and barometric pressure. And my heart rate, my aerobic training exertion and my anaerobic training exertion and the calories that I've burnt so far. And here we are back to the map screen. I've removed the data field, which is a facility that has been enabled in the latest firmware, 3.30. Some of the scenery we're going to be walking across. Now we're at the beginning of the moorland stage. 
we can see here that we're about to go up to the highest part of the walk, which is 1,431 feet. Now I can set the watch to give me reminders throughout the walk. In this case, I've set it to remind me to drink every hour. It's very easy to forget to drink when you're out walking in hot weather. Now the Lynn Brannock Trail takes in some quite remote areas of North Wales and you can see here there's not many people out and about. Now the trail itself is really well marked out. We can see here some of the trail markers and the Welsh Tourist Board has done a really great job of promoting walks within this area. You can see here some newly laid duck boards going across the moorland. Really the whole route is very accessible for everyone. A lot of people on mountain bikes also use this route. Despite this I saw very few people throughout the walk. Ok, let's see how we're doing on the walk. On the Phoenix 5X screen you can see we're bang on course and we've got 4.06 miles left so we're past the halfway point. Now along the walk there are various areas of archaeological interest. Here we can see a burial mound and this dates back to 1000 years BC. There's also another burial mound on this island. Right, let's check the pace. So we're currently 2 minutes 40 ahead of the pace time and we're still due to finish at 3.05. On the elevation screen we can see that we're on the downhill section now. It's the time of day and we've taken 1 hour and 48 minutes so far and covered a distance of 5.5 miles. And here's the heart rate at 70 an aerobic training effect, an anaerobic training effect and also the calories that we've burnt so far on the walk. And back to the map screen and we can see we've got 3.81 miles left before the end of the course. Now the training effect on the Phoenix 5X is now split into two. You have aerobic and anaerobic training effect and this is on a scale of 0 to 5. Ideally in everyday training you should be between 3 and 4. So performance training 4 to 5. And we can see here the screen on the pace screen has changed colour to black and this is because I'm behind the pace. And you can see here the grey arrow is pulling away from me now. I'm the blue arrow at the bottom. Along the route now, we're coming up into the forested section of the walk. I thought I'd use this opportunity to see how sensitive the GPS inside this Phoenix 5X would be. A lot of people mentioned that under heavy forest areas, that GPS sensitivity can be lost. Now if you look at the map on the Phoenix 5X, you can see we've veered slightly off route and this is because I've gone into the forest to check the GPS's sensitivity. So all in all, I think the Phoenix 5X's GPS is very accurate. Now this again is displayed here, where we're along the dotted red line which is the actual path of the route, rather than the straight line route which I've downloaded from the internet. And you can see here, well, we've still got some very high density of trees around us, so the GPS is working well. And again, back on the elevation screen, we can see it's all downhill from now on. Now you'll see in most of the data screens, a little red arrow. And this arrow is to point me along the direction that I need to go in order to follow the course. This arrow is evident on every data screen apart from the map, where the red arrow always points north.
Not far to go on the walk now, and if I look across, I can see the visitor's centre here at Lynn Brannock, and that's my final destination. All I need to do is walk across the dam at the end of the lake. It's getting quite windy here, but I'll check my progress on the Phoenix 5X to see how far I've got left. 0.82 miles, nearly there now. At the halfway point of the dam, is this commemorative plaque, which is written in both Welsh and English. And this says that Lynn Brennig Reservoir was opened on the 21st of December 1976 by the Prince of Wales. Now we've walked across the dam and we're at the other side now, and it's not far to go. All I need to do is walk through this gate, and we're pretty much at the visitor centre again now. Let's have a final progress check on the Phoenix 5X, and we can see now we've got 99 feet to go to finish the walk off. And there we are back to the car again, after completing the 9.5 mile walk. No problems with the Phoenix 5X, I can highly recommend it. All that's left to do is stop off at the Rug Estate for a well-deserved coffee and a sausage butty. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you do, please subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.